Hi there, thanks for joining. A lot of people when they want to draw or paint struggle with procrastination. Sometimes it is a little bit unconscious. Maybe you want to paint but you think oh maybe I need other brushes or I don't have the right paint or the right canvas. So maybe I uh, have to google all the night to uh, look for better brushes and that kind of stuff. Most of the time that's a sort of procrastination behavior and that's a shame because you are surrounded by beautiful Beautiful subjects to paint or to draw and also remind yourself that all great artists how, however great they are they all started simple Rembrandt didn't uh, paint the night watch uh, on his first day he started painting it took a lot of years of practice and he started simple so I just want to show you in this video I'm gonna paint this uh, sort of still life and these are just objects I found at the doorstep when I uh, wanted to enter my studio uh, recently and uh, I don't know who left them. I immediately saw, oh, this is a nice subject to paint someday. So I took it inside and I put it on the ground and I put a card box uh, behind it with a piece of cloth. Voila, we have a nice subject to paint. And it may seem uh, very easy and, and boring, but this subject alone has a lot of very big challenges. So that's my message uh, to all of you. And uh, it goes for myself as well. Sometimes you procrastinate and that's a shame. Just start painting, just take some, some simple objects and start. And when you have started painting or drawing, then you get into it and you go on. But you have to take that first step and dive into it and don't care too much. and. You may screw up your painting or your drawings, no problems. We all make a lot of mistakes, this isn't perfect as well. So I try, I painted this as best as I could and I try to learn from it. It is not perfect, but that doesn't matter. Now if you want, you can uh, paint along with me. I'll uh, put the link to this photograph in the description. You just have to take that first step, dive into it, don't think too much. Okay, enough of that, let's get started. It, of course, the first thing I see is it's kind of blue. So. I put some cyan on my palette, it's a, re a, re a neutral blue, eh? cyan, so I can choose what I want to do with it. And a little bit of white, titanium white. And I'm gonna mix a little bit because when I look at it now, I compare the color with what I have. The tonal value is way too dark. This is my first concern in this case. I have just put here some cyan. And I've added some titanium white. I think the tonal value is getting close, but the color is off, you see? And now I can see, oh, it needs a little bit of magenta. Uh, because this mine is not purple enough. And after that, I, I'm sure I need another color as well. But uh, at first, first impression this time is I need a bit of magenta. And, and, and if you're not sure, that can happen of course, that you're, you're not quite sure, uh, especially if you are a beginner in painting, that's no problem at all. Then just uh, adjust a small part with a little bit of magenta and then watch like this. Oh, am I going the right way? Ah, yes, I am. So, and then I know I'm on the right way. It looks more like the color that I see there than before. So I'm going the right way. I'm not there yet, but that doesn't matter. But this way I can see, okay, I'm going the right way. But what is lacking now? My color, uh, maybe I need to add uh, another bit of magenta, that, that can be. But also my color is, not, uh, is too dark. Uh, but also my color is too vivid. So let me first add a slight amount of titanium white, because when you add titanium white, the color gets less vivid as well, of course. When a color is too vivid, too saturated, you can tone it down by adding white or adding gray or black or adding a complementary color, color. Let's have a look. That's getting close, but now it's not gray enough, so my color is too vivid. So I'll have to add a little bit of yellow as well, because when I mix three primaries, then I get more gray color. But I have to be very careful you see, it's getting more of a gray color now. That's because we are mixing three primaries. And then whenever you do that, your color gets less saturated. Now we're good. And you see, 
Now, the paint covers better than I initially thought because I've uh, mixed, as I said, uh, uh, cyan and ultra uh, cyan and magenta magenta and cyan both are uh, are very transparent pigments but i've added titanium white of course and that's why the paint now is covering quite good better than i expected to be honest I just follow the form like this. Also, take a fair amount of paint, then it covers nicely. You can look through there, you see a little hole. And you can see here, of course, in this hole, like that. Don't mind painting uh, over the sketch lines because this object is coming is going to be painted on top of it so then it covers the background color again now i'm curious because i've got a lot of paint can't i just change the color of this paint to fit the color of the ground and i guess that's possible because this color is mainly gray i see all kinds of variations but i don't gonna mind all those those variations i just see a sort of a gray color there are some darker parts and there are some lighter parts i, I focus on the, this light part first i'll take a little bit of this paint and uh, you see the tonal value is too dark so i'll just add some white white is also a way to tone your color down now look at that we're very close and you see we're also as a color we're getting closer but now how do i make it more gray i just add some magenta to it and then i will be adding some yellow as well now then i'll add some yellow I have to be very careful so it's just finding a balance balance between the three primaries cyan magenta and yellow I, I use cadmium yellow middle it's not exactly a primary color but good enough ah look at that we have a, a nice sort of neutral gray for most parts i, I leave this I, I want to use that for some parts but i also need some slightly darker parts for here for instance and i think when i add a little bit of my previous mixture with that blue i think we can get there very easy. That's a little bit darker and now I'll add some magenta to it and a little bit of yellow. Okay, with these two colors I can do a lot. I can make this color but I can also make this, the, 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 the in-between color so to speak. Then I need a darker color for here for the shadow under the box. So therefore I want to add a little bit more cyan to my first mixture like this to make it darker then I add some magenta it's just the same but it's with less white so I just mix three primaries and then I try to find a balance so you see that's a color that I can use very good for here it's a little bit too dark but let me add a little bit of white maybe for and i keep a little bit of the darker part and like this yes okay i'll make another dark color slightly darker than that, what i've got here i need some more magenta so again as always most time is to, oh uh, when i do this dark color i can also uh, instantly make a dark color for the, the occlusion shadows so i make a purple for a dark color you see then i add some yellow and uh, oh oh yeah by the way uh, maybe it's because of the acrylic but i'm a, a messy painter my palette is every time i paint it's different i don't have structure in it i'm a uh, not such a structured person <laughs> in general uh, yeah that's how i do it some people have a very structured palette with the colors at the same spot every time i don't have that but uh, yeah i understand what i'm doing 
<laughs> for the most part. Uh, and also, I don't uh, clean my um, palette knife that often when I go through these colors because they're relatively gray anyhow. This, anyway, this, so it, it doesn't matter if I pollute them in this case. See, if you want to make vivid colors, on the other hand, so a very bright green, for instance, then when I take yellow, uh, I have to wipe my palette knife very clean and, 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 and take the other color, the cyan, for instance. So this is a good color for the purple uh, shadow that I see underneath the trechter. I don't know how it's called in English. I'm gonna take a look in the dictionary. Ah, yes, of course, the funnel. We say trechter. You see with the trechter. Now I've got a lot of colors. Let's have some fun painting. I'm gonna start with the dark shadow color. One thing would be nice, and that's a shame, I, I didn't uh, take care of that, but uh, I should have kept a little bit of this background color so that I can make this stroke a little bit soft. But okay, it's uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, also here underneath the funnel <laughs> we have cast shadow that is very dark and maybe there it gets a little bit lighter but in this instance I do it like this and here also I see a dark shadow but it's a little bit more brown so this like this now I go to the light color for the floor here so I'll add that here and I don't touch the line there yet the the line that I've put on just now see here we get the sh shadow part so this is all I, I just focus on the parts where it's where it's got to be a little bit light and just fill it in just like a puzzle on top of this like this like this. Oh, there I touched the, the line. Are there any other parts that are as bright as this? Well, maybe a little bit here and a little bit here. I just put it on and we'll see what we can do about it. What we can do with it, I, I must say. I just take another brush, a dry brush, and uh, this line is still a little bit wet and my new paint is also a little bit wet, so I just wipe them together a little bit like this you see like that that's what i wanted to do what i should have planned to do with uh, also the top side of the door it is, is in reality it's a door it's a blue door but okay uh, that's already uh, dry so that's difficult now but you can see here the effect, the line isn't that hard anymore, it's, it's softer. So that, that shadow is a little bit soft on the edge. Now we go to the next color. What can I do with this? Just take a look, we put it over here. It's all this color. Also I paint the edge automatically. I, 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 uh, I've learned to paint the edges. I don't like it to do that because uh, I find it distracting to be uh, that I have to think about the edges of my painting, of the canvas, I mean. But um, yeah, people who buy paintings want it, so <laughs> I stick to that, I, I do that. So I've learned to do that. Uh, when I was young I didn't bother. I, I think the what's on the front of the canvas matters and not what's at the sides of the canvas, but okay. And of course I also can understand that people uh, don't like to see the white sides of the canvas. So here there has to come a little bit of shadow, but I'll just blend them together a little bit. This color and the previous color, so like this. And here again, here is also that... Um, that shadow can be a little bit 
the, 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 the edge is a little bit hard, so I make it wet with this paint. Then I go to another brush and I just take that shadow paint again and look, I'll just try to soften it. You see, don't take the brush off the canvas, I just soften the edge a little bit like this. Don't be too precise, there's no problem. And like this, you can soften it, you can blend it wet in wet and that's good enough, I think. Well, the darkest shadow and I've got some of this. I can use this for here, around the box. So like this, I add it a bit like this. Same there, I do, now I mix this color with the darkest color and I just go over it like this. That's also, you can do that also. So it gets a little bit soft. And now I want to make that shadow even softer. So I take the lightest value that I made for it. And I go over it again. And when I'm lucky, the floor is still a little bit wet. <laughs> On the painting then, eh? not in reality. So like this, so I can blend it a little bit. So it goes from dark to slightly lighter. And here I want it uh, even lighter. So with my dirty brush, you see this color was on my brush. I mix it with the floor color. And now I go like this. I just soften that shadow, that cast shadow that we see there. And here I forgot a little part that it can be a little bit darker. So that's, that's enough for that. But uh, I'll do the same here. With, uh, I take this color and I mix it through the floor color a little bit. So we can get something like this here, you see. Here we get a little bit of the shadow color. Now I make it a little bit darker here. So I build it up a little bit. And here it is quite dark, I already had that, but then it gets, oops, then it gets a little bit lighter. Now I've destroyed this, that's a little bit pity. Okay, so when I take the lighter, lighter value like this, that's good. And then I'm gonna take a smaller brush because it's all a little bit small there. And I want to be a little bit more precise about this cast shadow, this occlusion shadow, and here, and then here I want to make it softer, so I just take the ground color again and I mix them a little bit together. So, and I just go over it again, like this. So that's the first step. Now, I'll add some more paint. You see, I don't lift the brush, I keep it on the canvas. Uh, okay, go like this. So, and here in the background, it's a little bit floor color again with a little bit of that, that shadow color mixed. Maybe I destroyed the cast shadow a little bit too much. Yes, I destroyed it a little bit too much. So I just restore it a little bit. It is quite dark, so let's make it that way. See? And watch now what I can do. Because, as I already said, there are all kinds of different colors in the floor. And you see already, I, I took this purplish color and I put that through the floor color that I already had. They're almost the same value of color, do you see? It's almost the same value. So, but the color is slightly different than this. Can you see on camera? I hope so. So this is a little bit more purplish than this. And when I want to, and when I do it like this on the canvas, just so like this, all kinds of abstract strokes, I just easily can create the effect of uh, a floor with, with, with a structure, with, uh, with this uh, yeah, structure on it. 
the pattern. You see? And I can uh, exaggerate it a little bit more or, or put another lighter uh, variation in it as well. So I make it a little bit lighter with white, but just slightly. These are very, very small steps. Look like this. You see? And just try to make an abstract brush stroke like this. Now, maybe you want to have a warmer tone as well, so I add a little bit of yellow and make it slightly lighter, like this. But you hardly see the difference, just like in the photograph, but it is there and it makes it a little bit more uh, lively. Now I want to see if I can use these colors to make the card box color colors. Yeah, this is relatively the same. It's not that different here around the corner. It's get a little bit lighter, but here it gets a little bit darker from the cast shadow and here where the flap is open, <laughs> it's a little bit darker. I don't know if that's an English word. I call it the flap, but uh, I've got a lot of uh, paint here and I just I'm just gonna adjust it to make it look like that color. So I just grab a lot of this paint up, and just uh, mix it through here. We don't care, but because also this color is also a kind of color that, uh, well, it is. It contains a lot of gray. It is a brown, so no problem whatsoever. So we don't have to waste much paint, and that is when you paint from life. That's almost always the case. There are so many colors that are uh, reasonably gray that it doesn't matter what you do. You, you throw all the colors together, you get gray and then you adjust the gray. So now I think, okay, maybe it needs to be a little bit of yellow. I'll just throw some yellow in. Let's have a look. What have we got here? Yes, that's nice. Okay, so that's nice for here for the color and value. I'll keep it. Then I need a darker part for here and the flap and a lighter part for there. Now the lighter part, I'm just gonna take some of this paint and add a little bit of white. That's kind of cool. Yeah, we, uh, uh, we. <laughs> now I want to start uh, par uh, parler français. <laughs> I want to start talking French. Okay, this is also good that I can use for that. Now I need a darker part only for the flap. So I'll just take some of this, I'll put it over here. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, one thing I want to do before is this logo. It's it's not that I'm uh, sponsored or anything, but this, it says Talens. That's a, a Dutch brand of paint and artists' materials. I have uh, done my best to sketch it uh, as good as I could. I want to paint that in first because I always find it difficult to paint text and letters. I add some cat red uh, middle to my palette and a little bit of ultramarine. And these are small parts, so I'll just take a smaller brush and I mix on the palette. So I have red, I add a little bit of ultramarine. And it's, it's not that important at this stage that this is uh, right away the right color, but because I can paint, oh, it's a little bit too dark. I can paint over it after I've done the, the card box color. So I just, this is just that there is something that I can fall back on later. So when I paint the card box color on top of this, this will shine through a little bit and then I can easily recover this logo. I hope. And it doesn't have to be too precise, but you want to have the illusion that there's something written. You see? But again, I don't mind too much about the colors. It's just that I can 
recover this very easy when I paint on top of it with the card box color. So like this, here it's slightly lighter, like this. And again here, this is not that important, these numbers and things there, I can easily uh, recover that. And while I'm at it, I, I, I want to have this dry before I paint the card box color, so I have the time. I can now make that more orangey color and get a little bit of that red, that's too red, so I need a little bit of yellow to make it more orange. And it's, it's reasonably saturated, that color, but still this color that I have here is too saturated. And you can check yourself by putting the paint on the edge of a paper and hold it close to the, to the photo. You see, it's, it's nearly there, it just needs a little touch of ultramarine to tone it down just a little bit, I think. It's, 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 see, that's it. So, these are very small adjustments that make a lot of difference. So here we have this orange uh, color and it's nice contrasting with that blue in the background a little bit, so I like it. And here we have this and this, okay. You see, now I just go on top of the background color, so that I've now you see on top of that edge, it's, it's turning this way, there you see a, a very light part. And uh, so I'll add some white to the orange and it's a little bit grayish. So i add a little bit of ultramarine to it and then I'll put a very small, some pages, it's a little bit exaggerated compared to the, the photo, but I'll add this like this, so it just gives it the impression that it's turning away from us. I can uh, put some color on the dop. How, you call, how do you call a dop in English? <laughs> I found it the cap, we call it dop. So I don't know why you call it cap. Strange, <laughs> enough of that. I'm just gonna take some yellow paint, uh, cat yellow, and for the shadow part I add a little bit of ultramarine. That's maybe a little bit too much, it's no problem. And then I have to tone it down a little bit with red. So it's a combination, again, it's a combination of three primaries. I'll take a look. I think it's close. Close enough. So I'll just add the shadow parts. Put in the shadow parts here. You see? Shadow part of the cap. And here this and here maybe a little piece like this so and at the side there so that's the first step uh, then again we have some light up of a more shadow part there like this that's good enough then I'm gonna add some white to it and more yellow and then I get a little bit of the toned down color for the top, I think. Because we see it as yellow, and it is yellow, but yellow isn't always yellow. Uh, uh, what kind of yellow? Eh? It's the question you ask yourself. So, like this. I just fill in, like this. And I see the same kind of color here. And maybe it looks a little bit off. That the colors aren't that uh, aren't right. But, and, and that can be the case. I make mistakes all the time. But it can also be that we get tricked because what we now see is yellow at some spots. 
but there are many spots that we haven't painted yet on the painting. So I can only see if this is correct if I see the total of colors in the end. So I have to cover, uh, what I mean is this, I have to cover the whole canvas before I can make judgments about the total of colors. So here I put on a lighter part and here and here on these ridges like this, okay. So and it can also be that it doesn't cover that well the first time so maybe I need to go over it the second time, there's no problem. And now I add some more yellow to it for, uh, because it, the color here is a little bit more intense and a little bit of red in this case, yes. So from here it gets a little bit more intense, here as well, and this one also, and here as well. And then there, there are some parts that are even more shadow, so I'll add some more red to it and more blue. And then you get some sort of, yeah, it's getting close to the burnt sienna color. what you then see. So here is the darkest part of the shadow in that turning thing. So then I see here this ridge is a little bit dark here And a little bit dark here. Oh, that's a little bit too dark, I think. I did too much. Okay, that's a little bit too much, but... Well, that are those kind of problems I can solve in a later stage. It's no problem. So, we have the beginning of the cap. And... Uh, I'll come back to it later when this is dry. Oh, maybe I need to do this as well. So, this part, I just fill it in. There's a lighter part on top that I've forgotten. Again, like this. And that is this. You see? Okay, at this stage I leave it like this and now I'm going to paint the card box. I also start with the darkest color for this flap here. And uh, I like it because it gives, it, it, it makes it also makes that piece of cloth stand out, you see? And and you have a little bit of that cast shadow here around the cloth and here yeah it's all reasonably this reasonably dark color you see and now I can paint on top of this watch what I do like this. And now I paint here, so where the box turns inward a little bit, I make it a little bit darker. Same goes here, see a small detail is a little bit dark, and this line here maybe, and this line here is a little bit darker than, than uh, the rest of the box. Okay, so now I go to this color. This was the right color, wasn't it? Yes, it was. So I'll put it on at the right spots. See, now it's just a case of painting by number. But 
we have but we have made the numbers ourselves so of course I can imagine that painting by number can be very pleasant to do because it's maybe something like making a jigsaw puzzle which I like very much when I take holidays I uh, like making jig jigsaw puzzles very much because it's something completely different for me other people when they have holidays they start painting <laughs> but for me painting is my job so I like doing other things of course oh here I destroyed it a little bit now I'm going over this again you see so I can see this logo is shining through so I can cover it again with paint that's why I did that so this is all the slightly lighter the darker a variation here in between I will get a smaller brush to put this in you see like this to get this color that was that color isn't it yes it was okay oh I've forgotten a piece of the of the cast shadow here no problem so like this uh, now I take the, the cast shadow color for here just cover it so here you see that there's a slightly lighter variation of shadow maybe a bit like this so that is it isn't uh, that hard of an edge uh, then something I make a very small lighter variation for this ridge here so like this and I see something light here that's that's enough I think okay now we'll, we'll mix quickly mix that uh, that label it is white uh, we know it's white but is it really white no if you compare it with now we will mix this label if you compare it with real white then you see oh it look we, we we interpret it as white but it isn't real white it is a gray so i'll take some of the titanium white and add some of the blue mixture that i have still lying around here and i'll put it on the edge of a paper and i compare and i see oh it's a little bit lighter so i put it there that's good okay so but it isn't white it is it is white but uh, yeah the way the light falls and light and shadow that's why it presents itself different here it gets slightly darker Uh, maybe I can one I do one more thing and that is that logo so again red and uh, ultramarine and of course this I do with a smaller brush because it's more detailed
but I don't want to be too precise about it again but it, it has to contain a little bit of that, uh, yeah, that graphic illustration so like this that's enough for the shadow part then it gets lighter so it contains more color Even kijken. Zo. And we have this beautiful T upside down. And this I do a little bit suggestive. So don't be too precise. Oh, there is a spot where it's still in the cast shadow. So like this. Oh, that's too much. Oops. There's also when you're getting a little bit tired, you also have to be very careful. You can sometimes make big mistakes. So these is just suggestions of letters. You see, that's enough. And st while it's still wet, I will uh, also add the barcode. So just make a little bit of gray and just do like this. You suggest the barcode. Yes, one. And this is maybe a little bit too dark, but don't spend too much time on it, that's more than enough. At some points, make it a little bit thicker. And this line may be done a little bit darker, so like that. Here I see some things too, but it is only slightly, slightly. It's way too dark already, you see. Just suggest that there are things on the label. And here I can't see anything. And then the last final thing before I clean my palette and go have a break, I take some of the cyan because uh, it's a waste to throw it away. Cyan with a little bit of white for this label, that blue thing. See? You get that kind of blue that's over there. I uh, see another thing that I want to do right away, and that is the dark shadow under the box has disappeared. So I put it in again because I like it. So, But now uh, at this stage, don't mind if it looks weird. It does look weird. Um, you can only see if it is looking good if you've covered every part of the canvas. At this stage it's impossible to make a judgment about that. So although you might hate your painting at this stage, that's very normal. Just go on, don't care about it and go on. I've taken a long break and now I'm gonna paint the piece of cloth. I'm also gonna use some magenta, ultramarine blue. And I'm gonna use some titanium white. I pre-mix some colors again. Uh, the darkest uh, parts in the piece of cloth that I see are here and here of course, but this is obviously the darkest part. To achieve that, I first start by adding some magenta and then we get an, uh, an orangey color, of course. But then you see it's way too orange. To Tone that down, I add some ultramarine. Yeah, that's good, okay. Now I focus on this color and I think if I add a little bit more yellow to it, reasonably close already. So I'll just take a look. Yeah, there you have it. And uh, then I'm gonna take a look at the other colors that I see and they contain definitely contain more yellow. Now I have some variations that I can easily use while painting so this is gonna be a nice I think. 
Let's start off with the darkest parts. And this is always, this looks very weird, you see, because the surrounding colors are missing. So I make a slightly lighter variation for here. You can also do it like this. Now I step over to the slightly lighter color and quickly blend them together here a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit and here as well. So this, this shadow is a little lighter than here. And then we go over here for this part. There's also a shadow. And that are the darkest shadows and we have a slightly darker shadow over here. Maybe it, this one contains a little bit more ultramarine blue. So we just added that a little bit, so like this. And where do I see other dark shadows? Oh, maybe around here. And a little bit, wait, you know what? I make this fold a little bit more. Now I go over to the lighter shadow color. <laughs> Sometimes these words are so, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to put in language, uh, these things we do sometimes. Also, a little bit of this, I just put this in first, like this, and then we can get to the darker color again for here. It lacks a little bit of blue, so I'll add that to it, you see. But I can paint very freely because of the premixed colors I have on my palette. Of course, I say the same things a lot of the times, but that's the life of an art instructor. Here I darken it a little bit and here, okay, so that is that, this we have here, okay, and here is a little fold like this, and now I get to the lighter, even lighter parts, let's have a look. So for instance here is a lighter part. And here around the fold, that's a little bit difficult. I'm gonna use this color and some of the previous mixture to make them blend more easy. So like this, and I just do this and they will blend quite easy. And now I'm gonna paint in this fellow like this. Now I quickly want to add the lighter parts to see if everything's gonna work a little bit. So the, the very, the, the absolutely lightest parts I'm gonna fill in first. So that's like here, for instance. So, and I can adjust it in a while. And I will ad adjust it later on a little bit because this is just base layer, of course. as well. Now I'm blending in a little bit of the other color for here. And to merge them I just go over it again and paint them a little bit wet and wet like this. 
and the darkest part is just here around the corner. So you see, this is just fun, painting like this. It's just a puzzle. Uh, I keep on going with the absolute lightest parts and I see a fold here again. And also, I like it to be a, a little bit loose. I want to paint a little bit realistically, of course. That's what I like. I'll add a little bit more of ultramarine for this, like this, you see. Then here it gets slightly lighter. So like this. You can now easily adjust the base colors that you already put on. It's just nice work to do. It's just fun. And while I'm here, I'm also going to adjust the cap of the uh, jerry can because the second layer will cover more and then it will look more natural, I hope. So like this, you see it is. It's always the case, with yellow especially. Often needs more layers so I just uh, go over it again a little bit lighter, this thing. Yes, that's good. Okay. So let's restore these parts here in between. Struggling to find the right color. Then this darker part that is almost burnt sienna. Then I'm gonna make some space on my palette and start painting the dark object. I'm gonna make this uh, dark colors with ultramarine blue and burnt umber. I'm really not against black, I use it uh, sometimes as well. But when you use black, you must be careful that you don't think, oh, everything is black, I'll just uh, put black on the canvas, because that gets very dull and there's more uh, variation and there's a color bias always in, even in black. And I'm gonna make a lot of that dark color in advance, because there's one downside to this method and that is that these two colors are reasonably transparent so the ultramarine is transparent and the burnt umber as well is quite transparent so chances are that i have to paint it twice with these colors so that for better coverage start with a reasonably small round brush to start with some difficult parts for instance, here the handle and this dark spot here. So, and I see it as uh, forms. So I see this kind of form here for the dark part and then it goes like this. And here it gets slightly lighter, so I leave it like that. And here again, it is quite dark.
like this and maybe it gets a little bit lighter oh need to load my brush better like this okay there it gets lighter again and then here underneath the cap this shadow of course and that's reasonably dark like this and uh, the fun part is I think that uh, until now up till now the painting was a little bit soft it didn't have that bite that uh, that contrast but with this thing that will all change of course because now we are getting contrast here as well I, I still want to use my small brush a little bit to do this a little bit precise okay this is all quite dark and if I do it too dark I can always adjust it a little bit go back and put a lighter color on top of it that's no problem but this is again it's a base color here it is slightly lighter so I leave it there and here it's quite dark again like this well I just do it like this here it gets a little bit lighter and well here we have dark well I think it's something like this see okay but now I take the big brush for the jerry can itself here of course these are the lightest parts well, I, it's about finding the form of the dark color you see and here you see it doesn't cover that well you see that it's a little bit transparent There's no problem. I have made enough paint, I can go over it later. See, like this. Now I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter for the next uh, values. I see it has some red uh, tone to it, so I just add some magenta and a little bit of yellow. And that will automatically also make the color lighter because uh, yeah, everything is lighter than black. So now I just add this color here. And of course you hardly see the difference, but that is good because in the photograph that's the same. You also hardly see the difference And here I just strike it like this of course later on we'll get a lighter color there in between but at this moment this is good enough and I'll do it here and then here it is reasonably dark and then surrounding that it gets a little bit lighter Here is the color light as well, a little bit lighter, and here as well. It's almost, yeah, it's the same color, a little bit like this. I need the same color for the edge, the ridge of that funnel. So, and you hardly see it, but on the photograph, I 
also hardly see it, so that's good. That's the trick of with uh, painting and drawing. We always tend... It goes for me as well. It, we always tend to paint what we don't see. <laughs> and uh, of course that's not gonna work. Here are uh, behind that ridge there's a dark color. Very dark. Small part. And then it gets slightly lighter because of that. Yeah, it's lighter here. So I had a little bit of white. Like this. Then I make it slightly darker here. See, and blend it a little bit, but not too much. That's enough like this, I think. And here we get the lighter colors. I do it uh, later on. So here again, also, now I'll get to more white, a little bit more white, because even though this looks light to us, the surrounding colors are all very dark, but this lighter color is lighter, but it's not white or very light. It's, it's just a little bit lighter than the surrounding colors. So a little bit like this is enough, I think. But if I make it not light enough, no problem whatsoever, I can always adjust. I can always easily add more light, that's no problem. And there, and then just I add a little light like this. But again, you see how dark it is? It looks like it's light. See, and here, this thing as well, here the lighter part is a little bit darker and here it gets a little bit lighter. So, and a little bit more blue I see as well. So, I add a little bit of more of ultramarine. Now I'll put it, oh, I try to be careful but I messed up. I messed up big time. <laughs> uh, but okay, I'll correct that later on. Now the light parts here also it contains a little bit of white of a little bit of ultramarine. Here it gets darker again. So like this with a little bit of magenta. So like this and this. Here I built it up. I make it lighter here. And then I go to the lightest light and add it. At this stage, this is the lightest I go. Now I need a little bit more of ultramarine for this color. It's still, it is very dark, you see? But it looks lighter because the surrounding colors are, are even darker. It's the whole time the same story, but that's how it is. Now I'm going to restore this handle a little bit, because I've messed up here. These lighter parts, I uh, can adjust a little bit. So again, I'll add some magenta, make it a little bit lighter. So for instance here, I can do this. see this a little bit in the direction of the form as well hadn't focused on that yet but that is also a thing okay Make this a little bit darker again like that okay now I'm gonna add a little bit more detail to the highlights so I'll put some white here and a little bit more ultramarine it's, it's a little bit bluish. See, so like this, I build it up, I make it slightly lighter here. And here as well, this one is nearly done. I'll have to put a slightly lighter color on top of it. So you have a sort of transition between 
the the lightest light and the and the, and the less see like this okay now I'm gonna adjust it a little bit make this a little bit lighter surrounding that color so like this and I do the same here this is a little bit too light already so now I quickly take some of this color I start darkening this again this might be done a little bit darker that highlight must be a little bit more to the other side I move it around a little bit you see this is light and then I make the surroundings a little bit darker so that it uh, will blend smoothly there I see definite, definitely a little bit of a greenish color around the highlight like this okay and here as well by the way i almost forgot so a little bit of green grayish reasonably light color but still it isn't it isn't white so like this and then more when it goes more downward I'll add some more blue and make it slightly darker again See. okay I think that's good this one I leave it as it is I like that loose uh, loose kind of, of and here I see a slightly lighter part I like adding that because yeah that gives it more of a feeling that it reflects something see like this it's a, bit, a little bit too much but same goes for here and then eh, final touch small details very small details maybe even some lighter part uh, you know a little bit of blue and very much white in this case and just build up this again a little bit lighter and here maybe as well that's enough and here maybe but also something like that rich around the funnel I make a lighter color and I use a small brush to uh, make a little bit of a lighter part here you see ah, that needs a little bit more of magenta when I compare it with the picture so like this now I've destroyed the form a little bit so I'll recover it like this here it gets darker of course so like this and now I stop with it but I hope that you have seen that even the things that look very easy to paint are very difficult and have a lot of challenging uh, aspects to it thanks for watching if you like this video please hit the like button and if you want to see more content subscribe to my channel it's free of course and uh, you get notified when I upload new videos thanks so much and see you next time